Hey there, Internet. Keeve here. And welcome to the Cars with Keeve YouTube channel. And as you can see, I'm not in the normal garage. I'm at the DIY Detail Film Studio in Omaha, Nebraska with Ivan. And then we got Rag Garage as well to help out. And I've kind of adopted rinseless to a certain degree in the last month or so. Uh, as they, they call it the hybrid wash, but Ivan calls it the rinse less wash method. And he's gonna go over and help us with the myths of rinseless wash, because I'm still not convinced on the sponge yet. Yeah. Or returning my media back to the dirty bucket. I use a multimedia type process where I'm using four or five microfibers and then flipping the microfibers to always have a clean side. That way my bucket, the rinseless wash, I can cap it off and use it for other things. I can use it for my interior later on, nice clean bucket. But he's gonna show us how rinseless and the, the science behind it of how it pulls dirt out of the media. And uh, you know maybe ease your fears when you see the murky, dirty water in the bucket that that's not going back onto the car. With that, all that being said, you can use code CARSWITHKEY to save 10% at DIYDetail.com. You can check the links below for anything in the video. Let's get the washing. Let's do it. Gentlemen, first thing we need is a bucket, obviously, and a sponge. Now you mentioned your hesitancy to use a sponge. Yeah. A lot of people feel the same way. The wash sponge has its place, and the wash sponge is very unique in our industry. Back in the 70s, the 80s, before he was born, uh, we're a little older. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm 45 now. Oh, so you saw the 80s, but not, not well. Uh, the, we used to, you know, there was wash sponges in the 80s that were popular and clearly they weren't the best on paint. The Rinsus wash sponge is specifically designed to absorb the dirt off the surface and release it in the wash media. So the Rinsus wash combined with the sponge work together. Now, if you're using a microfiber towel, microfibers are designed to grab onto dirt. When you bring it back to the wash solution, it may not be releasing everything. So it's actually a little unsafe to use a microfiber. Now, the way you use it is great because you, you'll put like 10, 15 microfibers in there, do a section, and it never goes back in the bucket. And that's great. If you need to release them. No, if you're using microfibers, that's the way to do it. Don't try to reuse the microfiber. But a microfiber doesn't have this, the thickness. You risk pressure points. Yep. There's no risk of pressure points with this. Which is why if you did use a microfiber, you want a really nice, plush, 500 GSM, like really plush microfiber. Yeah. And you want it wet, more wet or, you know, more moist than we would have the sponge normally. Right. So. Because of pressure points. Yeah. Well, pressure points and also dry wiping. And what's our dilution ratio on uh, rinseless wash? What do you think? <laughs> 256 to 1. 6 to 1. For everything. Before we start using the foam and before we start using this, never use the sponge on a dry vehicle. Okay. That's not a good way to do it. We need to pre-treat the surface. Okay. Now, Pre-treating the surface, there's a number of ways we could do it. For you, foam. you can foam it. All day. So we can do the foam, yes. rinse the foam away, and then do the rinse and swash. I don't think we're gonna do that today though. No. So what we have here is our keg, and you can use just a spray bottle if you want. You don't have to have the fancy keg. You can use an IK, you can use whatever you want. But the keg is the most convenient, and we're going to just put it on there. And notice, Rick, we have a bit of foam. Not much, but this is a foaming keg. Foam Pro 12, it foams quite well. Yeah. So it does foam a little bit. And you can put it in a foam cannon. I've heard that, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> well, I haven't used it like that yet. Yeah, it's not quite uh, a therapeutic type of foam. Yeah. Now Rick, since you really like to foam, grab that IK that, that's there. Okay. And foam the wheels. And what's in this one, Ivan? Same that's, thing? That's all clean, diluted. Well, this is all clean. That's all clean, diluted 15 to 1 okay. with just a touch of incredible suds for more dwell time. Thank you. Thank you for that little in incredible suds in there. Oops. Am I just doing the wheels? Yeah. Oh, well, you can do the, do this. the rocker panel as well since it's a little... I use the hip back here. It's all clean. Loosen up that grime. Not gonna lie, that's quite satisfying. And we'll let it sit for a minute. Not much. We don't need to let it sit for long. There wasn't a heavy, heavy accumulation of dirt on the vehicle. It's rinse less wash. It's not rinseless. It's not no rinsing. It's not no hose. You're still rinsing just a little bit. We're getting all those, those 
bigger particles off so that way they're not abrasive when on the next process. What the rinseless is doing now is emulsifying the dirt, lifting it off the surface. The rinseless is Zwitter ionic, which is a strange German term meaning neither negative nor positive. So being Zwitter ionic, it's lifting the dirt off the surface, bringing it away, and when we're pressure washing, we'll get that rinse, we'll get that dirt off the surface, the grit off the surface, leaving just a bit of traffic film. So gentlemen, there's a pressure washer hose on the floor. Yep. Find the end of it. We have a 40 degree tip, we have a 25, we have a 15, it's up to you. Hoses hate me. What the heck? That's a pretty big rock. See, see what the rinseless takes off the surface. Okay, so that knocks off the big, gnarly, obvious debris. That takes off the big stuff. Now next, we need to reapply rinseless to the surface. So just like a foam rinse foam, chemical rinse chemical, or rinseless rinse rinseless. Yes. So, Keeb, I'll let you uh, take the honors here. Now, people on my channel, yes, I'm wearing gloves. This is something you really never see before, but I even said I couldn't be here if I didn't use gloves. <laughs> <laughs> my shop, my rules. Uh, no, you should always wear gloves when detailing. And if you read the comments in Keeb's channel, You'll often see me commenting, you should be wearing gloves. <laughs> this is a keg-based sprayer. Uh, these do really well because you fill them with a lot of air and you get a lot of spray time out of it. Uh, I, I also use a, a Fantic sprayer, a little two gallon sp sprayer that pushes out about 100 PSI, helps knock stuff off as well. If you don't have, you don't want to use this rinse method. So there's all kinds of way to, to put it on the surface. Like he said earlier, IK sprayer, it doesn't really matter as long as you're coating the surface. I like these because it's coiled, uh, yeah. coiled hose. And if you have these battery operated sprayers like Keeve is talking about, you don't, need, you don't need to worry about the dilution ratio. Just use what's in your bucket. Maybe seeing we're putting on wheels and tires too because we're gonna wash the wheels with restless too. Yes, we are. You can try that one. It's press on, press off. All right, I can handle that. You don't have to hold the trigger. The technology of the sponge, like I said, it grabs and it releases. So grab the sponge and you don't want to use it like this. Okay. Uh, on the verge of dripping. So it's just yep. on the point of dripping. And red side and black side are identical. It's just a color difference. The foam is the same. So it acts as a tracer for you to know that, oh, I always start at the top with this color and I finish at the bottom with the other color. But I'm gonna do something that we tell people never to do, start at the bottom, just to show you guys something. It's not as dirty as I thought. No fake, there's all, you can, no, okay. no, other, all right. no other sponges in the bucket. I'm hyperventilating, but I'm <laughs> There's no other, no other sponges in the bucket, right? Touch, lift, squeeze. It's clean. You switch sponge. No, no, no. That's why I took it out of the bucket. Yeah. So that's the thing. That's going dirt really easily. Yeah. It's designed to release the dirt, whereas a microfiber is designed to hold on to the dirt. Now, this won't absorb that dirt back. We'll no. bring it back to the surface. No, the, the water in the bucket can look really, really gungy. Yeah. You put this in, and it's, the dirt stays in the bucket. We always end up with a clean wash media. And now we've taken most of the grit off the surface. We just have traffic film. Yeah. So starting at the top, working your way down. Okay. This will be fun. Do you want a platform? Do you want? Uh, I think I can make it. And That's about right. so Rick. Yeah, what am I doing? Old guy trick here. Don't stand on it, but now you'll be able to reach the Get center. Closer. Ah, yeah, I'll let Rick do the top part. Yeah. <laughs> 
And just linear strokes, Ivan? Yeah, or? is there a technique here to like... Uh, yeah, no pressure and just get it on the surface. Think of it that way. It just, basically, you're, absor you're absorbing the dirt off the surface into the sponge. So we're trying you, to dry it, basically. Yeah, as long as you touch everywhere, you're fine. And you can do the trim, you can do the windows, you can do all of that. And how often will I take it to the bucket? For one panel, one. flip the sponge over, use so the I'm other not, side. Okay, I'm not, I'm not detecting any dirt yet on the roof, so I shouldn't be touching. That's why we got the gloves, we can't leave the fingerprints. <laughs> do this. All right, so yeah, no, nothing on the grit guard at all? No, you don't need to go down the grit guard. Is this bucket for me back here? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we have a bucket on either side to make life easier for everyone. Rinse this wash in the wheel washing bucket. So I gotta tell you, Ivan, you need a a specialized smaller version of this to get like behind the door handles. Uh, have the microfiber towel in your bucket or just squeeze the sponge, it'll fit in. And you're hitting that with a brush? Same as you, you would. Want, and all you have is a little bit of uh, rinse and wash. suds in there as well. No, you? rinse and wash. Okay. The rinse and wash provides all the lubrication you need. It's just you don't see the bubbles. Okay. I like bubbles. I know you like bubbles. So when you were growing up, Rick, yeah. was Bubbles the Clown your favorite clown? What's, what's that? Was Bubbles the Clown your favorite clown? I, I don't remember Bubbles the Clown, to be honest. But I do remember the scrubbing bubbles on the commercial. Oh, yeah. Well, the scrubbing bubbles, I, that actually was a very educational commercial in the sense that they actually were scrubbing. If you're putting on a, like our all clean, all purpose cleaner and spraying it on, you're getting that same technology as we had in those old scrubbing bubbles commercials. Huh. I'll tell you one thing about the sponge I like is uh, on contours, it's just easier to clean contours. Yeah. Versus using that microfiber. So the cuts in the sponge are what do that. And the other aspect of the cuts is that it allows it, like I said, to conform to the surface. But the other nice thing about that is it gives you that safety. So if you do have a larger chunk, it's gonna go up between the cuts. Now, the other aspect of the, you know, the sponge and the cuts and all that fun stuff, people often ask about the, the seam in the sponge between the two colors. Yeah. That seam, you should never be using that side of the sponge, first of all. And even if it didn't have the seam, where there are no cuts, you should not be using the sponge because you don't have that conformity and you don't have the, the ability to pick up the dirt as well. Any spots left? I don't think so. I think this is- Is it as efficient as a, as a, well, I, as a foam bucket wash? Efficiency? Or do you feel like any difference like in slickness? Like, I mean, it feels like it glides the same as if I was using a, a microfiber mitt with foam. The sponge actually is a safer wash than the microfiber. And you mentioned you feel the glide. Yeah. The surfactants and the polymers and the rinseless wash are helping that lubrification. When you're using a soap and water wash, you need to rinse. And then you need to use a drying aid if you want to be safe. Because mm -hmm. you need a drying lubricant. With a rinseless, it is its own drying lubricant. And when we say rinseless, this is where the less part comes in. I don't need to rinse this off. I just dry. And I'm done. That wash is complete. We're finished. Now, if you want to use a topper, if you want to use a drying it, you can, but you don't need to. The rinseless wash provides all the lubrication you need to do that drying. That's part of the main reason why I've been using rinseless the last month or so as my contact wash. Yeah. Is that final step, it's just more efficient. I used to do the leaf blower with the spotless rinse. So you're not gonna use a leaf blower anymore? I haven't been for about a month now. So water in the mirrors, and water I, I still down. use my spotless water on my rinse before, so yeah. I still I, I use it for that. But I would still feel the need to use some air, and it just feels. I can't stand drips. Yeah. No, I can't stand drips either. Yeah, you get but, the, you get the crevices when you're done. That like you know. Yeah, and the other thing is, 
if this dries on the surface, it won't leave water spots. It leaves polymer spots that wipe right away. So even if you have a high TDS water, yeah. you got minerals, you know, it, it, in the, you can see in minerals the floating in your water. It's gonna do the job for you. And I find like, that was always against the drying process because I felt like that was a second contact. And anytime you introduce a second contact, you better be careful. You, you introduce another yeah. possibility to scratch. Right, yeah. But it just, it feels slick. It comes off and actually I, I feel like car gets cleaner because I'm doing that second kind of contact. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you prefer the drape over and pull method? It really doesn't matter. Or just yeah. get it dry. Just do your own thing. Yeah. Everybody has their own thing. Like you have no one tells me how to dry. The really car. big drying <laughs> towels. Some people prefer smaller drying towels. I'm a fan of a smaller drying towel, although the drying blanket I really like because it's a very, very different weave. It's a weave that no one else has. Yeah, it's, a yeah. Micro... it's very tight, like really small yeah. little. Yeah, it's a micro twist. It's like animal elephant skin. So Rick, the square you polished with uh, our friend Pan here, what do you think? Well, it's still intact. And that doesn't surprise me because my, uh, my fears, that I've never had fears, but my anxieties were with the making sure I've got everything clean. Yeah. Not, not, not fears of inducing any damage. So okay. I got point taken yeah. that it's a safe wash process. I can see why people enjoy having that as one option. Yeah, it's Some an option. People have made it the option and completely dismissed the, the traditional soap wash, that just riles me up a little bit right. because I don't see why it has to be an either or thing. You it, can have both. No, definitely. It's, neither, it's definitely not an either or thing. Now, if you're a professional detailer, my personal opinion is you should never be using soap because it takes more time, it takes more resources. And if you're doing this for money, yeah. time is money. Yeah. If you're doing this for fun in your driveway, by all means, the foam cannon is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are, there are incidents for both. There are reasons to use both. They're all valid reasons. No one is wrong. And more importantly, no one is right. There's no, this is the only way to do it. Yeah. So gloves off, finally, the sweaty palms. Uh, thanks for Rick, Brad Garage, thanks. Ivan for, uh, well, I didn't come, they didn't come by, I came by. Yeah. <laughs> We don't know where he lives. Yeah. He's very secretive that way. Yeah. You can check out links in the description below for anything in the video. Code cars to keep us you 10%. But uh, I hope this you know, answers some of your questions about rinseless, the myths, and using the sponge. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, Mike Check, one, two. Rick Fawcett, Rad Garage. Mike, Mike, check, check. Okay. Ivan. Ivan. That's me. I don't know how I, how do I not do that in one take at the house? That would have that would have taken 20 minutes. No, no. Now speaking of lubrific, lubrific, yeah. Oh, uh, he's gonna do his outro. You want to take these off, right? I'm gonna take. That's oh, that's part of oh, nice. That's part of his outro. Oh, I, right, knew, so I knew that was coming. Gloves off. <laughs> uh oh. Sorry. Put the glove back on. It's in. It's backwards. Nice work. <laughs> I would not have got that back on. <laughs>